Hi everyone, um, my name is Robert Dadashi. I work on Gemma, um, and I'm really excited to be here today to chat about our newest model. So we just released, released today the Gemma 2 model for Japan. It's a new 2 billion parameter Gemma post-train model with improved performance on Japanese. So there are many reasons why I'm excited to work on Gemma. But if I had to give one reason for Gemma 2 for Japan, it's that it's really core to Google's mission to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. Gemma 2 for Japan is a small model which is open weights and is uh, usable for non-English language. So it's really adherent to this mission. When training Gemma, there are two stages. The first one is pre-training where you use a lot of data to kind of teach your model uh, about the world. And the second stage is post-training, where you align your model to make it do the task you want it to do. So that can be coding, that can be uh, solving math questions. So during pre-training, you learn about a world through immense amount of data. I'm talking about trillions of tokens. So that requires um, you know, using large chunks of data, such as archive or Wikipedia. But in these trillions of tokens, there, there is a majority of English documents. For post-training, the data that you use is uh, completely different than pre-training. Since we're interested in making assistant or chatbots, what we need for training those models is chatbot queries. And there is considerably less data during post-training than there is during pre-training. Again, most of this data is English. Now, when we released the Gemma 2 models, people were excited about its performance on non-English languages. And there are two reasons for that. The Gemma 2 models were pre-trained on multilingual data. And we use the Gemma tokenizer which is fairly large, 256,000 tokens, which was also trained on multilingual data. For this new model, we pushed the Japanese abilities of Gemma 2B through post-training. So in other words, we started from the same pre-trained Gemma 2 model, and instead of applying our usual post-training recipe, we designed a new post-training uh, recipe for Gemma 2 for Japan. Now, during post-training, again, you have two stages. There's supervised fine-tuning, and there's reinforcement learning from human feedback. Supervised fine-tuning is <laughs> the easy stage, right? You start from a data set of prompt and responses. The prompt would be, what is the capital of Japan? And the response would be Tokyo. And your objective is standard classification ta task. You need to predict the response from the prompt. Now again, for Gemma 2 for Japan, we use, this, we use the same supervised fine tuning as Gemma 2. So really, the difference lies in reinforcement learning from human feedback. In reinforcement learning from human feedback, you don't have a data set of prompts and responses. It's a data set of prompts without responses. Instead of having responses, you have a reward model that is trained to predict which, which response the human prefer. So let's take an example. In this prompt, what is the capital of Japan? If you, have, if you were to have a response that is Kyoto, a good reward model would score it negatively because it's not the right answer. Now, if the response is Tokyo, since it's the right answer, a reward model would score it positively. So when we train the model using reinforcement learning from human feedback, the model generates a response which gets scored by the reward model and the objective is to get the highest score possible according to the reward model. Now the question is, how do you train this reward model? 
again, it's about preferences. So we need to collect preferences. So let's take the same example as before. What is the capital of Japan? Good, good answer is Tokyo. Bad answer is Kyoto. And we start from a large language model. As an input, we give it the prompt and the response. The output is a float. And the objective that we're optimizing for is that the reward model score for the prompt and the good answer should be higher than the reward model score from the, for the prompt and the bad answer. Now, when we did our LHF for Gemma 2 2B, so not the model that we're releasing today, the reward model was trained primarily on English data. And this led to an interesting phenomenon. There was what we call language collapse. Language collapse is, let's take this example. This one, so I'm not, uh, I'm not a Japanese speaker, but I think that means what is the capital of Japan? Um, if you were to say Tokyo in English, that's a language error. If you were to answer Tokyo in Japanese, there's no language error. And the language error rate of Gemma 2 2B on a set of challenging prompts is 29.6% meaning that you know, three out of 10 times on this set of challenging prompts, it doesn't answer on the, in the right um, uh, language. So we designed a solution for this. The first step was, perhaps unexpectedly, uh, to collect more Japanese prompts. And the second step was to introduce something that we call prompt instructed reward models. And here is the idea of prompt instructed reward models. So say that the model generates a response from a prompt. Um, the reward model um, here, if there's no preamble, it scores Tokyo in English higher than Tokyo in Japanese. And that leads to the language collapse, collapse that I was uh, mentioning before. Now, if we add a prompt to the reward model that says, be mindful of language consistency, for instance, the reward model understands that if you have an input prompt in Japanese, your answer should be in Japanese as well. So you can think of it as prompt tuning for reward models. Now here are some results of, uh, for Gemma 2 for Japan. So the language error rate on a set of challenging prompts, as I mentioned before, for Gemma 2 2B was 29.6%. With our new recipe, it drops to 0.6%, which is a huge improvement. We also run side-by-side -side evaluations from Japanese speakers on a set of general Japanese prompts. So we compare Gemma 2 2B against Gemma 2 for Japan. We use the preference scale going from minus 1.5 to 1.5, where minus 1.5 means that you strongly prefer Gemma 2 to be, and 1.5 means that you pre strongly prefer uh, uh, Gemma 2 for Japan. The results that we saw is that there's an, a large increase in quality, according to these Japanese raters, for Gemma 2 for Japan, and a large increase uh, in, in quality of instruction following. Now here are some um, advice on using this new Gemma 2 for Japan model. The first thing that I would advise you to do is to use greedy sampling. And the reason for that is we mitigated this language collapse problem, but when you sample with diversity, you're still more prone to get to a language error if you introduce uh, diversity in, in, in sampling. The other thing that is really important when you play with this large language model is to find good prompt tuning strategies. Um, so you can dramatically improve the performance of your model if you find a good prompt. Um, for instance, you can ask in your prompts for a specific style, for a specific length of the answer, or even for specific content. Let's take an example. So if I ask Gemma 2 for Japan, teach me something about butterflies. You see this pretty long response with a lot of bullet points. If I ask the model, teach me something about butterflies in three sentences with a comparison to bees, 
it does ex exactly that. So the way that uh, you interact with a model, you kind of have to specify what you really want from the model. Now, the reason why I'm really excited today is that we have a lot of developers in this room. And you, the practitioners, are the people who are best equipped to play with these models. I'm not speaking Japanese, so I don't know how to prompt them effectively in Japanese. Um, and still an open question, what are the right prompting strategies in different languages than English? You know that in English, the famous let's think step by step is really effective for improving the reasoning capabilities of the model. Unclear if the same prompt works just as well for Japanese. Now here are some uh, last remarks. Um, we will continue to uh, improve multilingual capabilities of the Gemma models. If you have any feedback on these models, please reach out to me. Can be over email, can be over Twitter. And the last thing I want to say is that we tune Gemma 2 for Japan primarily for Japanese. But it's pretty good in a few other languages too. And I know that there are some Korean developers here in the audience today. And I'm really looking forward for you to try Gemma 2 for Japan as well. Thank you so much.